Hey there, Stampers and Crafters, and welcome to our cocktail celebration card class today. Had a lot of fun with these cards. Um, they're from a couple of brand new bundles out of the new Stampin' Up! holiday catalog, and I couldn't wait to play with them when I first saw that catalog. I'm like, oh, that's going to be one of my first things to get. So I had a lot of fun with these, and I did do a little bit of a variety of different uh, cards here for different occasions. Um, we've got our champagne glass. We've got martini glasses. We've got a wine glass. I'd love to hear which one is your favorite. And I do have to tell you, they look even better in person than they do in this photo. So we'll pop down and show you those in just a minute. These are um, the bundles that I used here. There is the Sip Sip Hooray, uh, which it has the actual dies that match the stamps. You can use them together or separately, which we're going to do both in this class uh, with the stamp set. And then there's the, the Cheers. Um, oh my gosh, drawing a blank. Cheers to that stamp set bundle. And that has the cheers and a little swirly. We're going to use that too. We're going to have a lot of fun with this today. So thanks you for joining. Welcome everybody who is popping on board. We are uh, filming this live on Facebook and then the replay will be on my YouTube channel and also will stay on Facebook. So a uh, little uh, perk of watching live is you get an extra bonus into the uh, prize patrol. So prize patrol today is the cheers to that stamp set. The part of the bundle that we'll be using today. I have two to give away. One live, if you leave a comment here on this video, I will give one away live. And one, I will be doing the drawing on October 2nd. For those of you watching the replay, or maybe you didn't win the live, you're catching a little bit later. Um, so you have two chances to win there. All you need to do is leave a comment back on the original video. And if you share this video onto any social media platform, like Facebook or Pinterest uh, and type the word shared into the comments. I will enter you a second sign. So here's what we're going to be making. Love, 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 right? And um, before we jump into that, just a quick, quick note in case you didn't get my email this morning I sent out to my newsletter list. This is a special edition uh, holiday helper, which uh, I do every holiday season. Usually I start it in November and usually we do a 12 days of Christmas, 13 days of Christmas. Uh, project tutorials, which I'll I'll give to you free, kind of like a Christmas present. Well, this year, I'm actually doing two parts to this, and I'm starting one of them now here in September, and then the second part will start in November when I normally start with the 12 Days of Christmas. So right now, I'm doing 10 weeks of the brand new holiday catalog projects. They're absolutely free tutorials. Uh, I will send them directly to your email once a week, and it's free to sign up. Just go to stampwithtammy.com, and you will see the little link there. Type in your name and email, and they will come directly to you absolutely free. So that's a, just a little added bonus that, I, you know, I love to inspire. I love to give you guys ideas. So that's just one more one more thing I got for you. All right. So, like I said, these, these babies are, I, I think they look even better here in person. And I've got, uh, we've got our little martini glass. We're going to use some of that brand new mercury glass acetate paper for that. Love it. Look at this one, right? This would, I mean, it's New Year's, it could be any type of celebration, right? There's so many uses that you could use this one, the champagne glass for. And then I've got the, um, the wine glasses, which I had to use Mary Merlot for those because I felt, well, if we're going to do wine glasses and red wine, I have to do Mary Merlot as our color, right? It only made sense. And you may have noticed each one um, uses a different neutral color as its base. We have Whisper White, Very Vanilla, and Crumb Cake for bases here. And each one uses some different foil. So we have four different foil. Actually, we have some more foil um, colors in the new catalog. But we have four different foil colors here. We have uh, silver foil, copper foil, gold foil, and black foil. I'm actually using all of these today on these cards. So this one actually uses gold and black. Can you see that? That just it's, it, it makes it jump right off. All of it makes it jump right off. And then we've got copper on our wine glass card. And we've got the uh, we've got the martini glass here with a little olive, so stinking cute, right? So I want to get started. I'll show you how I made all of these. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of all three today. I'm gonna make one full card, and then I'll just show you the differences on the other cards um, that I made. And I have a little free PDF for you guys on my stampwithtammy.com blog. I have this with all of my online classes to help you out. You can follow along with it or use this later. It has all of the measurements that we're using. All three cards have the same measurements. So the center panels are all the same measurements, but I put them in different places on each card. So they have the same exact measurements. They're all listed right here. And I, I just liked, I, I don't know, I, I couldn't decide where to place them when I was putting them down. So I thought, oh, let's do a little bit of everything. Why not? We can do that, right? 
So it also has the different um, supplies that I used per card on here, as well as a full supply list. You can get this on the resource page for this online class simply by clicking on the link in this video's description or go to stampwithtammy.com and click on video tutorials and you'll find all of my video tutorials there, hundreds, hundreds. I love, love making them. I love stamping with you guys. Lots of fun. So we're going to get started. We're going to do some heat embossing as well as some um, embossing folders. So we're going to start with the, our Cheers card. You see I have two different versions here. Um, the one I have the little swirlies and one without the little swirlies. And I, I like them both, but I don't know. I really like the little swirlies, so we're going to do them both. And um, just zoom right in a little bit here. Let's start with our stamping, which is going to be heat embossing on all the cards. Our stamping is heat embossing. That'll be the same on all of them. So I'm going to take the, the, the image panel that I'm, is very vanilla for this card. And I'm using stays on ink. And this one is um, gold. I'm using gold, uh, gold embossing, gold foil. And this is our emboss buddy. This is the, if you, <laughs> if you, if you forget this step, you will regret it. Um, I know it seems like a, a silly little thing, just rubbing that down, but it keeps the static from the stamp down. So it keeps this powder from sticking to pieces of this card that we don't want it to stick to. And we are going to take our word stamp. Actually, we don't have a word stamp. All we have is the wine glass stamp, don't we? And you know what? I was going to mount these and I thought, let's use the Stamparatus. How fun will that be? Because this one's going to line up, right? So, pull that puppy out. Because we're lining up here, I thought this would be a, a fun way to do it. So a Stamparatus is a, the stamp positioning tool. And let's see, I've got a little bit of red paper I'll stick underneath there, although we probably don't need it for this project. It doesn't overlap, but I always like to stick it down there. So I'm just going to stick the paper down, and then we're going to take a magnet. We've got two magnets here. Put them. I'm going to put them towards the top because we're going to be... Actually, no, we're stamping this one in the middle, aren't we? Yeah, so maybe in the top corner, the bottom corner. Okay. So plate goes... I'm going to do this one on the top, but it doesn't matter. You can do it on the top or the side, however you choose. And then I'm going to take the stamp and just kind of place it here exactly where I want it. Make sure that it is the um, image side down, flat side up. Because this uh, plate from the Stamparatus is going to become our um, <laughs> our block, our clear block. So we're going to use that in place of a block. So I'm going to take some Versamark ink. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. We're going to ink up right where we want it. It's hard to see. The Versamark is really hard to see. And especially, it's hard to see in person. It's also hard to see on a video. But trust me, it's there. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Um, and then I'm going to do the center of the, the wine glass. So I'm going to show you on the box because I think it's easier to see that. These are uh, our photopolymer clear stamps, which is nice because we can see through them. But I've just stamped this image. Now I'm going to stamp the center. And again, I'm just going to lay this. This is the beautiful thing about the Stamparatus. There's like no, no work at all here. I just lay that right where I want it. And then we're going to put our, down. bring our um, plate down to pick it up and then we're going to stamp it. Okay, so my little guy moved a little bit, so he's a little bit to the side. So I'm going to teach you another trick and that is that the paper has two sides. So if you don't like what you did, <laughs> you can move it. All right, the other beautiful thing about this is, and if I had planned on doing more of these, I probably would have lined it up better, um, is that we already have our stamps all lined up and ready to go. So if we had a boo-boo like I just did, oops. I'm just trying to move these so that we get a good image, but so that my paper doesn't pick up with the plate like it just did. Okay. And these are already lined up, right? So let me just make sure that that is lined up, though.
Well, I'm just going to go with it because I can't even see. <laughs> We're going to say it's lined up. All right, here we go. So we've stamped in Versamark ink. I'm going to take my very, very primitive uh, embossing powder catcher here, which is actually just a piece of scrap paper folded in half, and I'm pour this over. We're going to see how well we did with the line up there. which wasn't awesome on the second time around, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's still going to look adorable. All right, so I'm just kind of getting some of that. There's a little touch of it that went outside the lines. The rest of it, it's, it's just going to look cool no matter what we do, so it is all good on that. Okay, so pouring this right back into the jar. And we're going to take our heat tool, whoops, get that right out of there. We're going to take our heat tool here and make sure it's plugged in. There we go. And then we're going to heat up this powder. You know what? I see a little piece is missing on here. Let's just put a little bit more powder on there. Did I miss the embossing trays? Oh, it was missing a spot in there. That's why. Let's see if we can get a little bit of powder on there without getting it everywhere. Yeah, it is what it is. We're going to have a spot in there. It's going to be that special touch, right? Uh, the embossing trays that we used to sell a long time ago. You know what? They were nice, but I don't actually... I don't mind using scrap paper. I always have it handy, so it's it's just as easy for me. Anywho, so this here is going to melt this powder. I know most of you have probably seen this before, but just in case you don't. There we go. It's like, this is so cool. So yesterday was my, um, yesterday was my 16th year as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. It was my anniversary. And I have to tell you, in 16 years, this never gets old. It's a wow. Even this much time later, it is still a wow. I still love to heat and boss. I just, I think it's a lot of fun. All right, so now, next up, we're going to do some big shot work. So first, I'm going to use the, um, yeah, that's how you tell it's handmade. Absolutely. First up, I'm going to use the subtle embossing folder for the background. This is a 3D folder, and uh, what that means is it's thicker than our regular folders, but it's a nice, this just gives it a nice textured background. We actually used to sell textured cardstock for a little while, and I love that we can make our own now, which is very cool. So you're going to take your die cut machine. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks for the anniversary wishes. I can't believe it's been 16 years, to be honest. It's kind of crazy. I'm just going to get just a hair here. So uh, again, because this is 3D and it's thicker than our regular ones, I am only using one plate instead of two. It's that thick. And then we're gonna, whoops, I'm gonna try that a little bit better, a little bit more straight. We're gonna crank that right through. And when we're done, we get this awesome, awesome, Textured, can you see that in there? Texture on the background. It's very subtle, hence the <laughs> hence the reason why the folder's called subtle. But it's awesome. It's just that tiny little touch that makes everything a wow. Now, next up, we're gonna take that. Uh, this is the actual um, die from the. Uh, it's called Cheers, the Cheers die, and we're gonna take some black. Uh, foil and some gold foil and we're going to run it through the big shot and I did this already just to save a little bit of time so we've got two of each the swirly and the um, the, the word cheers which I absolutely love so these two here and then these two here and we're going to layer these together to create our card and I'm going to show you one more little trick um, when I put this card together these 
two panels is a, a black foil and a gold foil are going to layer on top of each other. And then this glass is going to layer on top of that. I actually cut the word cheers out of those two panels just to save on the foil. It's just one way of conserving it because it fits right in there and you're not going to see that we did that. So that's just a little cheat to get a little more mileage out of your, your foil. Okay. So since I pre-cut it, we're going to go ahead and assemble. Actually, I'm going to, I am going to go ahead and assemble that part just using some snail adhesive. Again, that was the cheers die that I used there. So fun. This would make a great wedding card. It actually would make a really good wedding card or an anniversary card, special anniversary. Here we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach this piece to our card. And I'm gonna do that with some Stampin' Dimensionals just to give it a little bit of pop. Also because I'm addicted to dimensionals. <laughs> I love them. And I have already pre-attached that subtle piece to the top of our card front here. So we're all assembled. And this one I put smack dab in the middle. Like I said, each one I put in a different position. One I put to the side, one I angled, just because I loved them all and I really wasn't sure which one I wanted to do, so kind of did a little of everything. So next up, we're going to take these and we're going to attach them to each other. And I just used snail for this. Uh, you could use the fine tip glue pen. If you had adhesive sheets, you could attach those before you um, cut them and attach them to each other. I, I didn't do either of those things, so I'm literally just going to take some snail adhesive. And I really should be doing this on my silicone mat. Except, let me dig that out so I don't. As much as I love my little scrap paper, I'm afraid that some of this might stick to it and rip. And the silicone mat is perfect when you're doing adhesive. And then we're just gonna, oops. You guys see this okay? Okay, just wanna make sure um, my hands are not in the way. What I'm doing is I'm just lining it up so the black foil layer is like a shadow underneath. And try to get it as tight as possible so there's not a huge gap between the two. There we go. And if there's a little bit, we might have a little bit of wiggle room that we can fix if there's too much of a gap. That C, I think, has just a little bit too much of a gap. That's okay. Ah, can you tell the concentration? There we go. Whoops. <laughs> Throwing it around. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the little swirlies. And I do, I, you, could, you could leave these off or you could put them together, the swirlies. And if you have any adhesive show through from the snail, um, I didn't catch too much with the swirly. It was more sometimes um, with the letters I got a little adhesive show through. You could use your tape to pick tool to poke those out. I might get a little bit when I do this portion right here. So we have our swirly and we have our cheers. We're going to, and I guess I don't really need it on the S or the C. I really need it in the middle. Again, using some snail adhesive here. Just gonna double check and make sure I don't have any. Oops, I did pretty good on that. Now I put the cheers right up here at a little bit of an angle. Not that one I put up way high. If we can get, if you can see that little wine glass. And then our little swirly. I think I would have liked to have done those. Um, this die a little bit tighter. I don't, know if I, I don't know how much wiggle room I still have there. I don't want to, it's, it's not an, bothering me enough that I would ruin the, there we go. There we go. And so that is our basic card, but then I have a little bit of bling I want to put on it in the form of some basic rhinestones. 
And so those, I'm just gonna, if I can find my take your pick tool, hiding on the table. So it has this little gummy end right here and it's awesome for just picking up these tiny little things. And these guys, here, there we go, right? Perfect little spot for it. In fact, let's put a big one there. Oh, it's almost like it was made for that, right? It's almost like that was intentional. So our rhinestones are gonna be our bubbly. Beautiful, right? So fun, and I, I I love it. This set is just just definitely climbed to one of my favorites when I saw it and when I got it. So now I have the our other two cards that we're gonna create. Um, since we've already done the base of this card and the bases are all pretty much the same with the subtle folder and the um, and the foil, what I'll do is we'll just move right into the differences. So card number two is this uh, wine glass, the Merlot, using Mary Merlot, and Sip Sip Hooray. This one's got copper on it. And um, let's see, the Sip Sip Hooray came from the Sip Sip Hooray stamp set. And then I cut the, the glass. Oh, you guys, thanks for the hearts. I love you right back. Love you. These are the dies here. And so what I did was, or what we're going to do now, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> we're going to stamp those wine glasses. And the color that I used here, actually, I think in the beginning I told you this was uh, Whisper White. Actually, that is not true. This is shimmery white, which you can use whis whisper white as well. Whisper white will look really good, but the shimmer white gives it just a little sparkle and it's really nice to watercolor on, which is what we're going to do next. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit of scrap paper here. And we're going to take the aqua painter. I've got just a, an acrylic block is all I'm using for this one. We've got a little bit of uh, Mary Merlot. Re-anchor. These re-anchors are good for more than just ink pads. We can paint with them. We can do all kinds of cool techniques with them. And now I'm using stays on ink. So stays on black. And the reason why I'm using this is because it's permanent. It's got some waterproofing in it and it's not going to bleed when I watercolor these. So, and it smells yummy too. Stamp two of those. And our aqua painter, it's just a paintbrush. They come in um, a set of two, which has a thin brush and a, and a wide brush. You could actually use either one. I think I've got the thin one with me today. And this top just comes right off and that you can add water to it. So it's kind of like your cup and your brush all in one. How cool is that? So I'm going to test it out here. I want it to be fairly wet, but not, not so wet that it's runny. And I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that. Mary Merlot, I'm going to test it out on my scrap paper, which I always do before I do any type of um, watercoloring, just to make sure I, it's, it's the consistency that I want. It's not too thick. And then I'm just going to layer a little bit of this Mary Merlot, just to give it a little bit of, of depth on, on this side here. So it's a little darker. It's kind of in the sun. And then we're going to do the same thing. Second glass, second, first, same as the first. This brush is a little bit more wet than I wanted it, so I'm just going to wipe some of that water off. But this is one advantage to using watercolor paper or this shimmer white paper is it's, it's a little bit more forgiving than Whisper White when you watercolor. And that is how we fill our wine glasses in the stamping world. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to take the die. And this is from the Sip and Celebrate, and it's this wine glass die right here. And we're going to cut these out with the Big Shot. And through the magic of video, ta-da, <laughs> there it is. And then we're going to go ahead and attach these two to our card using Stampin' Dimensionals. So I've, go, I've, I've gone ahead and pre-assembled our card. The rest of this was made exactly like the first card, except I angled, um, when I put the, the, the center pa panel down, I angled it instead of putting it straight down in the center. These guys are going down with Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm just gonna put one on each.
and we, of course they're clinking, right? So I wanted them to come off a little bit. So they, they're, they're over the frame a little bit. They've got a little angle on it. It was super fun, right? <laughs> all right, so that's all there was to this card. Just a little bit of heat embossing. We textured the background just like we did with the first card. And if you're popping in late, you can go back and watch the beginning where we did the, we, we put the whole card, assembled the whole card together. And then the only difference on this one was I watercolored um, the glasses there with some with an ink pad. So that is card number two. Next up, our last card in the set are martini glasses. This is card number three. Now this one, in addition to using the foil, this uses uh, silver foil. We are also going to use a really cool, a couple of really cool papers here. The first one here is the Noble Peacock Designer Series paper. And I know, I, I, originally I had wanted to use the, um, this this Noble Peacock comes in, in foil, just like the, the solid foils that I just showed you, but the, these colors um, that the pattern paper comes in, and it comes in patterns. But I didn't get the foil, so that's on my next order. So I thought, well, let's see what it looks like with these patterns. So I actually used this old olive pattern, and to be honest with you, I thought it came out fantastic because it gave it texture. This gave the, the martini glass texture and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. But first, let me show you the other awesome pieces in here. So you could make other drinks here if you wanted to make punch, if you wanted to make Kool-Aid or some type of other fruity blue Hawaiian drink. You could use some of these other um, pattern papers, other colors. So that was one of the papers that I used on the martini glass. And the other one is brand new in this holiday catalog and this is called mercury glass so there's two different patterns here i pre-cut this one they, they come 12 by 12. they are uh window sheets with this cool overlay on them this one almost looks like a snowstorm it's like splatter and then this one's more like a, a crackle effect they're both very cool i use the the splatter spongy effect for these and using this die here i pre-cut for this card. So I pre-cut out of that two of these, um, the, the mercury glass acetate out of that speckle, speckle design, and then two of the Noble Peacock out of the specialty paper. But again, the, the foil, if you had the, the Noble Peacock foil, that would look awesome too. Then out of this die set, there's olives. Stop it, right? Of course, they could be cherries too. You could, depending on what drink you're making, these could be, these could be used for a variety of things. So I cut two of everything. I cut two mercury glass martini glasses, two of the noble peacock martini glasses, and then uh, in soft suede, two two olives and two olives out of old olive. Because of course you gotta use old olive just like you're using Mary Merlot with the wine. Just makes sense, doesn't it? Alrighty. So now we're gonna make build our wine glasses and build our olives. But you didn't think about wine glasses as uh, building them, did you? <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with our base. The base is going to be the Noble Peacock uh, specialty paper. And then we're going to attach this. I just used snail on the top of this mercury glass window sheet. And it's going to go right over. And this is where, I, when I said it had texture because of that pattern in it, I'm going to hold it up here so you can really see it. It's so, can you guys see that, that texture on there? There are like speckles in there. It's so cool. It looks really neat. But the foil, if you had the, the solid um, old olive foil from the uh, specialty paper pack, that would also look awesome. I'm not sure if that's showing up on the camera, but very, very cool. <laughs> Filling, not building. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Filling the glass. Today we're building the glass. Well, maybe we'll call it filling. So we're just placing one right on top of the other, and those are the two glasses. Next up, we've got our olives. Oh, more hearts. I love you guys. Make my day. So paper snips on these because for the green um, old olive ones, I don't want the toothpick or the stir, whatever you want to. I'm making it a toothpick today. But, you know, it could be a stir. If you put cherries on a stir or fruit on a stir, it could be, it could be any of those things. But today we're making it a toothpick. So we just want to make sure they're lined up the right way. And then either mini glue dots or my snail would happen to be out. So I'm using that to stick that on top. I 
and we've got our little olives. Now I did put these on after. So now we're going to go ahead and assemble our card. And this one is a crumb cake base. We used a, a bunch of different neutrals. So I've got a crumb cake base with old olive cardstock and then silver with silver embossing. Again, if you're popping in late, you can check the go back and check the replay for the beginning where we made the, put the whole full card together. And this time I put the greeting off to the right hand side because I thought that looked cool too. When you can't decide, make them all, right? Why the heck not? Okay, so the martini glasses I put on with Stampin' Dimensionals, just like we did with the wine glasses. And for these guys, I'm going to put a mini dimensional down here, just on one of them, the bottom one. The top one, I think I'm going to put some snail on to stick it to the bottom one, just so that the bottoms of these guys stick, because they're not overlapping as much as the other ones. And I've got one of my hairs in there. Somebody's going to get a real gift. <laughs> Good thing I'm not a chef. Ew. All right, so I'm going to put this one at a little bit of an angle so it's coming off. Go away. Oh, my gosh, that hair is sticking to everything today. So it's off the edge here. I'm going to put a little bit of snail on the bottom of this one because I'm going to stick it to this so it's already popped up. You like the verse? Hope your big day is just one happy hour after another. Again, that could be for many different occasions. I mean, at first glance, I'm thinking birthday, but that could go for other things too, like new job or, you know, celebrations. All right. New house. So I've got some mini glue dots here. I'm going to stick the olives down with mini glue dots. And there I stuffed them. I actually put them flat on the card base but a little bit so you can see, in my case, I'm making this a toothpick, but so you can see the toothpick or the stirrer, whatever you would like to call it. Aren't they so adorable? I love these little olives, so dang cute. So, this is such a cute, cute bundle. Both of these bundles, I, I feel like they go together, these two bundles. Okay, so we've got our olives. Our card is mostly complete, but there's one more step that I thought just pulled this entire thing together and that is rhinestones but not just any rhinestones red rhinestones because it's an olive right olives have little red pits or they do today so we're going to put one of those on each of the olives give it a little bling bling so cute right and card number three is complete adorbs so those are our three cocktail celebration cards which one do you think now? Now that you've seen the maid, which one do you get? I know that I think the martini glass got the most love when I was holding the first poll. But now that you've seen them in person, which one do you? Which one jumps out the most to you? I, I don't know. I like the wine glass, but the cheers and the, I, I can't decide. I love them all. <laughs> Lots of fun. Don't forget to download the free PDF. And don't forget, if you haven't signed up for my holiday helper, jump on over to my stampwithtammy.com blog to do that as well. Alrighty, well, thank you for joining me for this online class, and I will be back on Saturday. Uh, a little bit of a, a schedule change this week, so I will be on Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and look forward to seeing you then.